thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. Welcome. And Hi, everybody. That means I love you. It's not a bad sign. Because you have your thumb out. That's right. This is my <laughs> wife, Sharon, spelled with two R's. <laughs> there it is, right on the screen. That's right. We have a clip that will give you a catalyst into the interview with my most honored guest. Watch this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Today I have the honor of welcoming my friend, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, to the White House. With this visit, the United States again reaffirms our unbreakable bond with our cherished ally, Israel. The partnership between our two countries, built on our shared values, has advanced the cause of human freedom dignity and peace. These are the building blocks of democracy. Mm. You're looking at Lori mm. Cardosa Moore. Mm -hmm. She is the founder and president of Proclaiming Justice for the Nations, with the mission to educate Christians about their biblical responsibility to stand mm. with Israel. And take a look at our screensaver right behind Lori. Look at that. L Lori, look at the screen. Isn't that neat? <laughs> wow. That's our president of the United States with the president of the Christian Television Network. That's beautiful. Before he was elected, mm. Bob went to Tampa mm. and had prayer with him. And that picture, I, I mean, I have a cup that has it on it. I mean, it's, one, it's an icon. Mm -hmm. But... Did we know at that time, I asked Bob that, I said, did you have any idea mm. you were holding hands? Because at that time, nobody right. gave him a chance. Right. They said, yeah. you've got to be kidding. Everybody was joking about it. And he was holding hands with the next president of the United States, the 45th mm -hmm. president. And everything is being thrown at him, mm. Lori. Absolutely. Beyond, mm -hmm. I mean, not only the Republicans, the yep. Democrats, uh, the, I mean, the atheists, I mean, you just name anybody, it's like like when you see a shower yeah. of, of hail yeah, and I'm, it starts coming down. I'm reminded that God said in his word that he would use the simple to confound the wise wow. or those who think that they're wise. Yeah. And yes, it's been unbelievable what this man has endured. I was talking to a, a professor at Liberty University, a friend of mine, and he said to me just, just days ago, he said, Herman, can you believe that a man that we never looked at as having anything to do with Christianity, mm -hmm. the Bible, or religion whatsoever, mm -hmm. he has stood boldly yes. proclaiming Absolutely. the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And I said, that just blows me away. Because if you had a staunch, that's, that's what we thought with mm -hmm. President Bush, mm -hmm. and he would kind of skirt around the issue, fearful that he was going right. to... to Offend. Oh, up, yes, offend. That's the key. Someone, so you always tiptoe into it. This guy just comes straight on. Right. But I mean, Absolutely. who would have thought? Absolutely. Yeah, I was there uh, last, was it last summer in New York when the over 1,000 Christian leaders came yes. to New York to meet, to have a conversation yes. with Donald Trump. And I was amazed because I was there in the room. And, you know, you can pick up a lot about people's persona when you're physically there. What was your feeling? I was, I was kind of pleasantly surprised. I didn't know what to expect because Trump wasn't who I was supporting. Yeah, you know, yeah. when, when you were going cruise, through the right? elections, I was, yes, yeah, I well, was yeah. absolutely cruise. All Christians were crews. <laughs> yeah. and, and when I see what he's pulled off and how, how I mean, how fearless he is, mm -hmm. I'm thinking. That's what he loves I, about it. Yeah, absolutely. I just don't think Cruz would have had that kind of gut power. But you know what? That's 
what we need yeah. for such a time as this. Yes. We need to let our yes be yes and our no be no. And that is the type of leader that Donald Trump is. And I say, God bless it. Yeah. Because we know also God says that he raises up kings yes. and he brings them down. Yes. Exactly he has right. raised up this man for this hour. Mm -hmm. And so the, the church should be getting behind his leadership and supporting him because he, yeah. it's, gonna, it's not gonna get better. I'm gonna leave Lori alone during this interview. <laughs> Really, I mean, she has, I have been in banquets when she has been introduced and she gets up. And I just admire anybody that can pull that off. Because I'm an introvert and ask me to speak someplace, you'll have to go to the bathroom and try, try to find me. Cause, no, he's, he's not here. I thought he was here. But she stands up with such dignity. And dignity, great. yes. Good. Thank you, honey, for helping me. You're welcome. Uh, in 2016, she was named one of the top 100 people positively impacting Israel. Mm -hmm. And the Jewish news so source globally, apparently that was a present, but you have been Minor. an ally mm -hmm. of Israel. Can I Israel. ask her a question first? Too? You can do anything you want. What put that burning desire in your heart for Israel? Good question. It was. It, oh, Sharon, it was years ago um, studying the Bible. After I gave my mm. life to the Lord, you all remember Henry Blackaby. He yes. wrote the book, Experiencing God. Yes. And somebody had told me about that Bible study book. So I ordered it. I was still a newbie Christian and I ordered it. And I remembered the thing that stood out. He said in that book that if you want to be relevant or be used by God, Look around you, see where God is working, and then put yourself right in the middle of it. And I looked around. I knew the scriptures. I had been studying the Bible for um, 11 years. You're a very and smart I woman. I saw, well, you know, I, I don't know about that, but I, I have a heart for the Lord, and I have a heart to see truth exalted. And unfortunately, we have watched um, a culture our world decay. Yeah. Yeah. And so I said, like Isaiah said, he nay ni, hear my Lord. Mm -hmm. I saw the, the lack of understanding about Israel and 9-11 really was the catalyst that oh, set really? it all off. So it was years of educating myself, studying the Bible, opening myself up and being willing to be a servant of the Lord. And when I saw the scriptures and 9-11 and happened, I knew when the second plane flew into the towers that Amalek had just come to our shores. And we remember Amalek, God t said, he told Israel that he would wage war against Amalek from generation to generation. And he told the Israelites, you are never to forget what Amalek did to you while you were wandering through the desert on the way to the promised land. Amalek, their military strategy was to blindside and they hit Israel from the rear, where all the, tw the children, the women, the elderly were. Mm -hmm. And because of that, God said he would never forget what they did. And he personally would wage war again against them from generation to generation. So when the first plane flew in, we were all kind of, was this an accident? Right. But when the second plane flew into the second tower, we all knew mm -hmm. in our spirit, we're under attack. And I knew, I saw that attack as Amalek. And I said to my children at that time, Amalek has just come to our shores, the US. And I didn't understand it at the time because why is Amalek attacking the United States? Isn't he supposed to be attacking Israel? But because we are part, we're Christians, we are grafted into the Commonwealth of Israel. We're part of Israel as well. So of course they're going to attack the United States. But I said to my children, the youngest of which was two, as we're watching together in the classroom, because I was homeschooling at the time, and I said to my children, I said that the life that you know as children will not be the life you know as adults. Wow. And look at how true that has wow. become. Absolutely. That so that's, that's what started um, that effort. And because when I started talking to pastors and I started to see the anti-Semitic attitude of even Christian leadership. I had one pastor, Presbyterian, when we were hosting a big rally in Nashville because we were introducing, we were the second state to introduce a resolution supporting the state of Israel right after Alabama. And I asked my pre Presbyterian minister if he would come and be the keynote speaker at this rally at the state capitol. And you know what he said to me? He laughed and he says, oh, no, you don't want me there. 
And he walked away and I turned to my husband and I said. That's where you were going to church? Yes, that's where I was going to church. And I said, Stan, I said, do you think he disagrees with what I'm doing? And my husband said, you're not gonna be able to count on him to be there. And so I went on and I was kind of naive. I thought maybe I misunderstood something. But then I realized when I started to speak to more pastors and, and the replacement theology and the supersessionist right. yes, yes, comments that yes. they would make, oh no, God's done with the Jews. Yes. I said, well, I read my Bible. No, he's not. He's gonna fulfill his covenant, his promise to them. And so that started the, and I would pray and I'd say, Lord, what pastors should I go and speak to about this? Wow. And he said to me, and I, I, I was, you know, I continued in prayer. And he said to me, he said, I want you to bypass my pulpits. And I want you to go to the people in the pews. He said, because I've gone to my shepherds and they refuse to listen. He who touches Israel right. touches the apple of God's eye. And if Israel is not front and, and focal center for any pastor or Christian leader, then we have to question. Their goal is not to uphold what is precious to the Lord, our God. We need to question where are they coming from? Because now we see anti-Semitism on the rise. In the last year, 45%, we see a rise of... Uh, How much did you say? 45% oh, in the United States. Well, yeah. uh, you, see the you see the Muslims on MSNBC and CNN and all these fake news areas. Yes. And, and they're talking about they're being oppressed. Right. But it's actually the Jews that are being oppressed. It is. Or, if you look at the stats, mm -hmm. it is not... Um, it is not Islam or Islamophobia yeah. that is on the rise. Right. It is anti-Semitism on the rise, and nobody wants to report that. They want to buy into the narrative that, oh, it's these, these um, uh, Western civilization that is attacking the Muslims in the community. No, they're not. Mm -mm. No. It's, it's anti-Semitism. And because oh, Christians Jeez. do not study their Bibles, yes. because this is not this message, we're in... Do we agree that we're in the last days? Would you hold that Bible up for a minute? Absolutely. I just want to say, keep a shot on her while she's got it up, Dave. Study it, yes. okay? <laughs> study it's it. It's all right here. Study it. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, if absolutely. The, if, if the preacher is wrong on the point you just right. made, then what is he on the rest of them? What? Well, because Herman, I think too often we take a, we have one verse and we create a whole sermon out of one You're verse right. instead right. of preaching the context and taking us back. Because look at the New Testament, and I, I point this out to Christians all the time. Jesus or Yeshua, his apostles, his disciples were not quoting each other. They were quoting Moses. Mm -hmm. They were quoting the prophets. Wow. What a concept. That's a revelation. But I have Christians who say, oh, well, that's the Old Testament. That's old. I don't have to read that anymore. I said, how are you going to understand your faith unless you understand the foundation of your faith? Right. Because we are the wild olive branch grafted in mm -hmm. to the rich green olive shoot. Wow. So how can we say if we don't know our past, we don't know history, biblical history, we cannot understand what our role is at this time in these last days. We, I'm telling you, this is so critically important for now. We just had a clip of the President of the United States with Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. Did you see them when they first met? It was like, it's like we're, we're yeah. close friends. Yeah. And when you walk in a room, okay, yeah. immediately you know that we like each other. Right. That's what you saw. Absolutely. The previous president, it was like, Almost like you've seen a cat with his fur up. Wow. It was all like yes. it was like Obama had his fur up already. Yeah. Because he would rather be in Palestine with its leader mm -hmm. talking right. about things. It was so obvious. Or in Cairo, Egypt, mm -hmm. speaking to all of the jurists, the imams, instead of going to Israel yeah. to speak with Netanyahu and apologizing for America and our policies. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was outrageous. You know, it's Thank God that Trump is in office. Wow. And now we have the, we have to work while we still have a life. Can't you see while Satan? Can't you see Satan 
coming from all directions. Oh my god. It's gosh. like mm -hmm. I told Sharon, I said it's like you go into a forest mm -hmm. and you take this big rock and you turn it over. Mm -hmm. And the rock looked beautiful, nothing wrong right. with it, moss around it. You turn it over and all of a sudden there is unbelievable worms and <laughs> insects and everything underneath there. He has turned over the networks. Absolutely. He has turned over the Republicans. Right. He has turned over Washington. And he's draining the swamp. Absolutely. And you know, I'm and just thinking. That's what he said he was going to do. And, this, he, and I, he needs to. This morning, I was just thinking, you know what we need? We need the preaching swamp yes. turned over. Absolutely. There has to be, unless it all comes back to, unless we go back to the foundation of our faith. And you know what's interesting is we see this manifesting, this revisionist history yes. Yes. in Christianity. Explain that, would you, for a second? Okay, so revisionist history is an attempt, and we see this happening in our public schools Absolutely. with our curriculum. You know, we've been at the forefront of fighting this anti-Semitic rhetoric, anti-Judeo-Christian, anti-West um, mentality in our children's coming schools. Coming out of our schools, our All professors. over the country, this is happening. We're hearing from parents in New York, and of course, you know, I'm here in Florida speaking to parents throughout several counties about this issue and mobilizing the parents to get engaged. But what's happening is the same revisionist history that is going on in our textbooks, in our public schools, and even our Christian schools, don't think that your children are safe because you found a, a good Christian school. Well, because right. a lot of the Christian schools are using, purchasing the textbooks that the public schools are using yeah. because it saves them money. They, they're printed in Texas Absolutely. and they're revised. Absolutely. So what we're seeing, the, the same thing that we're seeing with revisionist history in our public schools is happening even within Christianity. And so that's why we see replacement theology and we see supersessionism making a comeback where we hear the statement that God is done with the Jews. We don't have to read the Old Testament because that's old, it's over. No, that's the history. I mean, all scripture is God breathed yes. and, and good for educating and reproof. Yes. We should be studying all of it because that's what helps to build our faith, to see what God did before and what he promised he would do for the future. And that's, that is what's happening within Christianity. And I think, I think that we see just like we see in Europe, Christians have left the church. Yes. They're not in the institutional churches anymore. Now, where are they meeting? They're meeting in home groups. I was just- Lori, look what's happened in England. Oh my gosh. You you look at the most powerful preachers yeah. ever mm -hmm. came out of England. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whitfield. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And now it yeah. will be yeah, just in a few years the Muslims will control it. Here's an interesting thing to to add to that what you said, Herman. Because some of the greatest Christian leaders came out of Europe. And that's where we even received the Balfour Declaration, bringing it back to Israel. Mm -hmm. wow. We're, this is the year, November 2nd, is the 100th anniversary of Lord Balfour's letter to the Queen about reestablishing that the Jews should be reestablished in their ancient homeland. Mm -hmm. That's 100 years this wow. year, November 2nd. That's the type of leadership That's that right. was given us. And 100 years before Balfour, there were other evangelical Christians, and I just recently found this out. I was amazed to come across this information. But even a hundred years prior to Balfour, there were evangelical Christians who believed that God was going to restore Israel to her ancient homeland. 1948 changed everything. And all of these rep replacement theologists and supersessionists who bought into this false narrative that God is done with Israel, he's done with our Jewish brethren, what do you do with 1948? Because if God's done and now it's all about the church, how did the state of Israel come into fruition? Because that wasn't man that created that, that established that, that was a miracle of God. You have such insight. This president along with other presidents and even Obama, and of course, you know, as soon as he said it, you go, you gotta be kidding me, that ain't gonna happen. Right. But President Trump said, that he wanted the embassy yes. in Jerusalem. Correct. Yes. That's Can huge. you imagine what he's going through right now right. with a few of these, you know, that he, he forgot to close the door when he went in the bathroom and therefore that's unpresidential. I mean, I mean, I'm, right. I just made that up, but I mean, it, that's how stupid some of the right. stuff is. Well, you Do know, you think it'll happen? 
yes, I do believe it will happen. And Herman, you know I serve as a special envoy at the United Nations for the World Council of Independent Christian Churches. And we are, um, uh, we have contacted Ambassador Haley to ask for her assistance on a couple of issues that we're gonna be working She's on. She's doing great. She is. I'm telling you, when he named her <laughs> to be the U.S. Ambassador, it was like the dark cloud that, that resides over that building and that whole area in New York City was lifted oh, I and know. I could feel it. It was like there was hope and I met with her senior um, staff um, initially, I think it was maybe two, three months after she had been appointed Boy, you to the position. Boy, you have not with the I, wow. well, I went and met with, with their team and I said to them, I said, I've been doing this since 2011 and I'm telling you, it has been like a dark cloud, repressive. Yeah. Wow. The, the spiritual um, demonic warfare in that building, in the meetings that I attend on anti-Semitism, on human rights abuses, nobody wants to bring up the anti-Semitism. We want to talk about the Christians and the Yazidis and as well we should because they're being persecuted, but to leave out the rise of anti-Semitism. We, do, we want to talk about is oh. Oh yeah, that, of course. That's, that's the politically correct. That, yeah. Well, that's because the the um, the organization of Islamic uh, countries mm -hmm. is controlling what happens. Can in the you US. imagine Hollywood is for uh, all of this, and if they took over America, mm -hmm. they would clean up Hollywood. Yeah. You wouldn't see one. Oh yeah. Beautiful person, mm -hmm. handsome guy, movie. It would be done. Yeah. But they, not be they're, any they're so dumb. Right. <laughs> I know. Ignorance. I don't know. Some people say it's bliss. I don't know about that. I think it's repressive. <laughs> the ignorance is going to, to oppress them and suppress them. What is this all about? Boycott this. This is our most recent documentary, Herman, where we expose the anti-Semitic BDS or Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions movement. This film is so critically important for our day because just like when Hitler came to power, wow. one of the first things he did was he boycotted Jewish businesses. We remember the images of the yellow Magen David being painted on the storefronts of Jewish businesses. And, and Hitler told the Germans, do not buy from a Jew. Now, with the rebirth of the modern state of Israel, Israel has become the Jew among the nations. And so now the whole world is telling the, the rest of the world, don't buy from the Jews. Don't buy from Israel. Boycott them. Boycott their academics. Boycott their technology. Boycott their advancements in medicine. Boycott their humanitarian aid. That's absolutely crazy. They have a Silicon Valley like we have here in America, it, in Israel. Since 1948, 70 years, and for them to be able to accomplish what they've accomplished mm -hmm. in almost 70 years is Would unbelievable. Would that be a God thing? Oh, it has to be. <laughs> gotcha. You know, if you look at the history of, of even Tel Aviv, and I don't know if you've been to the museum there, Independence Hall in Tel Aviv, which is where Ben-Gurion made that famous speech when Israel was established as a nation, when the UN voted. And when you walk in there and you see the, the films and the history of what Tel Aviv was, it was sand dunes. Mm. You know, originally, before, even before 1948, in the early 1900s, there were sand dunes. There was nothing. And now when you fly into David, to, to Ben Gurion Airport, and you look out the window from the airplane, and you see this massive number of buildings, high rises, businesses, and this is all in less than 70 years that they've been able to, to, to do this. It has Isn't to be a miracle from God. You yeah. cannot ignore, and the, the leaders cannot ignore that this is a miracle. God's hand is all over this. Mm -hmm. He is going to return and he is coming back to Jerusalem, his holy city. We looked at what UNESCO just did. <laughs> Amen. We looked at what UNESCO has just done with Hebron with the cave of the patriarchs, trying to um, rephrase or rename that area Palestine, and that that is a Muslim cultural historic center. Wow. It's unbelievable. They just did it earlier, um, back in, in uh, December, with, with the Temple Mount.
trying to say that you know there's no Jew, there's no Jewish history here. Well, we know that even our Messiah Yeshua Jesus walked in the temple courts, yes. where the Dome of the Rock is sitting. Lori, what did you think when the president walked over to the wall? Oh my gosh! And stood there and prayed. And prayed, and and he, you could see his hand. Yes. You knew he was praying. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was powerful. It was powerful. Yeah. We're so, you know, we are that's so a, blessed. That's a reason to hate him, actually. <laughs> oh, yes. You know? Yes. If you hate Israel, you hate the Jews, you hate Trump. Yeah. Yeah. But it is a miracle <clears throat> that we had a president who went to the Western Wall, yes. who the closest place, the retaining wall that used to retain the temples, first and second temples, and he went there to pray to Almighty God. Wow. That is huge. And the fact that, yes, he didn't move the embassy yet, well, but he is going that, to. You know, wouldn't that have been the perfect time, though? Oh, that was a 50th year. I know. It would have been absolutely it would have perfect. Been like, it's like I heard one, one guy, I think it was uh, Huckabee. He said he, said, uh, uh, he hit a, uh, a three bases mm -hmm. when, he did, when he did that on the wall. Yes. But he said if he would have brought the embassy to Jerusalem, it would have been a home run. I believe it's important for us as Christians to contact our congressmen, our senators, go to the White House website and urge President Trump. He's going to have another opportunity this yeah. coming yeah. Uh, December 1st, November 30th, to move that embassy again. Yeah. This is the time that we start communicating. They already hate him. He might. He might. He may just, as well just go ahead just and do it. Pile it They're all. Gonna, <laughs> pile it all. all going to be angry That's anyways. Right. What difference does it make? Just would you do share? It. Would you share Christ? That's your camera, <clears throat> and challenge pastors, Christian leaders, to get behind. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem every Amen. day. Would Amen. you challenge the people watching? Absolutely. One minute. You know, oh gosh, that could be, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> you know, I just want to remind the audience, you're sitting tuned in today for a reason. It's yes. not a mistake right. that you're hearing this message. Yep. And God has chosen, he's raised up this generation. Yes. He has given you a heart for our Messiah, Amen. our Jewish Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Yes. He's given you a heart to receive salvation. And if you haven't, I encourage you to do so Amen. today. But I want you to think about how critically important it is that God did not bring you into the earth 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago. He brought you today. And he's giving you this opportunity to hear this message. And now I want to encourage you. Yes to go into your prayer closet yes. and pray and ask the Lord, what is this Lori Cardoza Moore talking about? And I encourage you to let us know what the Lord is sharing with you yes. by visiting our website at pjtn.org. Amen. Do that. Thank today. you, Herman. Don't let this day go by. Trust Christ. Mm. God bless you. Bye-bye. Amen. Thank you for watching It's Time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.